Now I'm going to introduce the concept of a multiplier. What is a multiplier? That's a concept that's very often used in, in input-output economics. Um, before I do so, um, have a look at, uh, at this equation. Basically, this equation is the first step to actually understanding an input-output account as a model or that you can use for analysis because a model does more than just accounting. Basically what you, what you can do with this equation, while it's statically correct for any static account, you can use it for modeling in a way that you interpret this equation as a demand pool model. Basically you could say, tell me why, why as a, not why, but as a question, but uh, because, but as, a, as this letter here, and I will tell you x. Or in, or in other uh, versions, tell me uh, what change do you expect in Y, and I will tell you what change uh, results from that in, in X. Okay? So it's a, it's a, it's a differential uh, formulation of this you can use as a, as a sort of demand pool impact model. In the sense, well, there will be certain changes in the final demand. In order to absorb or to, to, to meet this final uh, demand, you have to actually uh, increase all the activity in the entire economy and uh, to different extents in different industries and that gives you then uh, as a solution of, of your model a change in, in X. Okay. Um, the change in gross output is not usually what, what people have been very interested in uh, and the, the reason for that is that Within gross output, what people weren't interested in is all this intermediate demand. Because intermediate demand, you know, it's, it's just part of a supply chain anyway, and that's uh, not something that, that people have usually um, paid attention to a lot. But what have peop people have paid a, a lot of attention to is this, is this value added, because that's in the end what counts. This is GDP, not that, okay? Intermediate demand is just um, something that, that, that exists for an intermediate period that gets turned into something else. But finally, what, what, what matters here is how much wages you pay out to people, how many taxes the government collects, and how, many, how much surplus uh, uh, companies make. So let's combine this equation there with, with, um, with value added. Okay? And the way we do this is in a similar way as we constructed this uh, direct requirements um, um, matrix. Uh, let's say, let's say in the overall economy we have um, we have a value added v, okay. And let's assume we can write this as. Oh, no, that's a scalar, that's a scalar, as a vector v times x, okay? Now you can see here that v is a coefficient. It is a value added per unit of gross output, okay? Oh, you can turn this around basically, and li like we did with a, you can calculate v equals v um, a vector times x, minus 1, okay? Okay? If this is sectoral gross value added. Now, let's insert this equation there for x, and then we get equals v, 1 minus a to the minus 1 times y, okay? So here, you have two ways of calculating total, total GDP. Okay? One, you can calculate it from gross output, and these, all these coefficients are also sometimes called intensities. Right? Or you can calculate it from, from final demand, and from these things here, they're called, that's the multipliers. You can see here, a multiplier is an intensity that's post-multiplied by this matrix here. Oh, I should have said there, this matrix is called the Leontief inverse because this relationship was Leontief's famous uh, uh, input-output relationship. Now, you can see this now mathematically, but let, let's fill this with a bit of, a bit of intuitive meaning here. Um, 
this thing V just tells you, for every industry, the amount of value added per gross output. And that's simply it. Only what happens within that sector. And you see here, in this formulation, you have posts multiplied that by something that has this A matrix in it. And this A matrix, as you know, contains all these, these interdependencies of the economy. So, so basically, intuitively speaking, not mathematically speaking, what that means is that this multiplier has embedded in it all the intersectoral relationships that are in that matrix. Or, in other words, whilst the intensity gives you, say, the value added in that one industry you know, of, that has gross output x, this multiplier gives you the value added that is a consequence of the final demand from that industry, but the value added in that industry and all other industries in the economy that are affected ultimately by that final demand in that one industry. Okay, or explain in a different way. If you once again do it differentially, somebody tells you, well, I expect to change dy in that variable, y. Right, y. What's going to happen to value added? That's a really important question because people are going to know if we give consumers of that and that kind certain tax cuts or rebates and this and that, what are they going to buy with it? And ultimately, where, in which industry is employment going to be fostered and or surplus being made or from which industry are we going to get our taxes? Just an example, if you give people money to buy cars, you'll get employment in the iron ore industry or in the steel industry in addition to the car industry. This is what, what's measured by, by, by a multiplier. Okay? The first time peop, uh, somebody came with up in the multiplier was uh, John Maynard Keynes, but he didn't have the, the, the matrix for formalism. He just had a, just a scalar equation. It was Leontief's uh, um, uh, basic idea to actually write Keynes multiplier formula in a, in a matrix form and actually connect it for the first time with a real database on economies. So let's do that here. Uh, you say, now, let's drive this thing with demand. You say, I expect more and more final demand here. People are going to somehow export. China's going to buy more things from us or whatever. Then you can multiply each, um, each of these uh, uh, for a particular industry change in, in final demand with its multiplier let's say, uh, value-added multiply, and this thing will tell us how much more value-added you can expect based on the change um, in, in, uh, in, in final demand. And you can also calculate in which other industries, other than that industry where the final demand change occurs, are affected. And the interesting bit is uh, you can also um, only look at wages in here. And you say, well, I'm not interested in taxes and gross surplus. So just look at wages in this sector and calculate the wage multiplier for that. Or you can only calculate the tax multiplier for this. Right? So all that works. And we see in the, not the next one, but in, the, uh, in two weeks' time, you'll see how that fundamental equation that comes out of the national accounting identity also applies for environmental. So keep this in mind for in two weeks' time, this, this equation. Because a multiplier is a very fundamental concept. Um, 